What is up YouTube? I am super excited to show all of you this project that I worked on last summer. Now, for those of you who follow me on Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat, you've probably already seen posts about this project from about six months ago. And you probably already know that I like to call this project Cayenne Pepper. Cayenne Pepper is a project I designed to help novice scientists get into research and navigating citation networks of different research papers. So the way it works is you go onto the site, you look up a topic that you're interested in, and then the browser will render all of these different research papers that are relevant to that topic. And it'll also show you which papers cite which other papers. It's kind of like a where to start and where to go next, like a reading list for research. It combines a lot of awesome technologies that I personally have wanted to get into, or I already kind of knew at that point, including Flask, Node, MySQL, and web crawlers. I had also teased making it public back when I was working on this project, you know, like a 24 hour free trial period. I just couldn't quite find any good hosting options for free. I had meant to make it public using the University of Maryland servers, but I just had way too much stuff to do at that point and I couldn't get around to working out a hosting agreement. But maybe if enough people are interested in it, I might just go up to them again and ask if I can make this public for 24 hours. So some of you might be asking, why would I make a project like this? Well, I myself actually am working on a few research projects with a mentor at the University of Maryland. And as fun as I think research is, I, I can't, I just really don't, like reading all these research papers. Maybe not even that. I mean, reading them is kind of fine, but I think just trying to find them and trying to figure out, you know, where do you start? I mean, if you're getting into some crazy like quantum theory or in my case, computational biology research, you have this huge corpus of research papers. So where do you start? You know, what entry point is most relevant to the topic you're trying to research and where do you go from there? So you have this huge body of research that's all interconnected by citations. You just don't know how to navigate it. And that's really why I built this app, Cayenne Pepper, to help people navigate these research networks. So inspiration for this app came from a sort of unlikely place, actually. Uh, it came from Marvel Comics. Earlier in 2018, free comic book day got to me and I kind of got into reading comic books. And the more and more I looked into it, I heard of this really interesting marketing tidbit from Marvel. They had these comics branded Marvel Now or All New, All Different, and I think even Marvel Now 2.0. And from a marketing standpoint, that just seemed kind of interesting to me. So I look up, you know, what does Marvel Now 2.0 mean and all that type stuff. And the results I found this article is that essentially Marvel now is a way for Marvel to tie up their more convoluted decades long past, you know, because they've been creating comics since like the 50s or something. And then they can open and close these new storylines, maybe with new characters or concepts or whatever, designed for new readers. Essentially, it's a way for Marvel to make themselves more accessible to new people coming in who haven't been involved in Marvel Comics for like the past few decades. And so I thought this would be really cool, but for research papers, because of my own experience of research, I think it would be awesome if I can make it easier for new researchers to get into studying this stuff. And that's the general story of how I created or why I created Cayenne Pepper. And that's also why I'm wearing my Spider-Man shirt. Now, Cayenne pepper is actually pretty simple for something that might sound so complex. It consists of three main parts. There's the front-end website, a basic Python Flask server, and a MySQL database. When a user searches something on the website, the website queries the Flask server, which in turn queries the MySQL database. And then the database sends data back to the server. The server kind of messes it around, formats it easier for the client, it sends it back to the client and the client renders it into the web page. And 
that's all the research networks that you end up seeing on the site. That's all good and simple, but you might be asking yourself, where does the database even get this information from on all these different research papers? That's where my web crawler comes in. So in addition to the basic front-end, back-end, data-driven sort of web app model that I've built for this app, I also needed a web crawler. And for those of you who don't know what this is, a web crawler is essentially just a program that goes through the internet, picks out websites, gets information from them, and then might store that information in a database. And in this case, it does. It stores it in my MySQL database. I decided to build my web crawler in Node.js because I really like using that language. I wanted to practice it a little bit more. And it just makes web crawlers pretty easy because it being JavaScript, it has some pretty good HTTP request libraries and stuff like that. And it's pretty easy to build a web crawler in general. You just have to have it go to different websites and then extract data. The hard part is the extracting data bit. I created what I like to call my metadata extraction algorithm. And so what this does is it's designed to look at different online journals and then extract data from like meta tags or just parse the HTML, extract what it needs, and then dump it into the database. And I mainly want to focus on the title of a paper, which journal it comes from, and which papers it cites in turn, because that's what gets us our network. You start at one paper, and then you spread out to all the papers that it cites, and you spread out to all the papers that they cite, and you just keep doing that and that again and again until theoretically you've got all the research in the world in your database. Of course, I only ran this for a small subset of all the research in the world. It, I really, don't have the time to fit an algorithm to every single online journal because they're all structured differently according to their HTML. In the end, I decided mostly just to focus on nature journals. So anything from the Nature Publishing Group should theoretically be accessible by my web crawler algorithm. And I picked Nature because these websites have really good meta tags that have like the author and the citations and the DOI and all that type stuff. Now, before I can show you the app in action, I have to run the web crawl a little bit. I accidentally dropped the database. Like, no joke, that's literally the MySQL command that deletes a database. I really should have given it a more recognizable name as opposed to just test. So here I have a collection of research papers that I use during the testing process to actually develop my metadata extraction algorithm. Fun fact, one of these actually has my name as a co-author. One of my friends from the University of Maryland published a paper in 2017, and I actually got to help him by creating this web app that can spit out and search through his data for him. And I'll probably have a video relating to that a bit later on in the channel. But until then, I'm just gonna use it to power my data-driven backend of the Cayenne Pepper app. And because I feel like an absolute god when my programs automate, I'm gonna let you all sit back and watch this web crawler in action to some music from Iron Man 1. Okay, so now that our database has repopulated a bit, let's actually take a look at how you use the app. So this right here is just the home screen. You know, this is what you'll see when you load it up for the first time. So the way it works is we're gonna search something. I think I wanna search cardio, as in heart. You know, so this might come with like cardiomyopathy or other types of heart disease. I think I got some stuff in the database on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And as you can see, we have these three different papers here, and I can actually drag them around. And so this is a paper that I have my name published in as a co-author, and it cites this paper right here and this one right here. And you can see 
how it creates the sort of network. At this point, it's just a simple binary tree. So I'm actually going to click on this one and it'll open up that article in the browser. As you can see, my name is right here. Oh, God, no, it's not everything. No, geez. It's, the, the, it's this one right here. It's right here. So let's take that out of that. And now you can also look up other stuff. Like I think I've got something on Wu To in here. Some little like Chinese traditional medicine uh, and how it affects neuropathic stuff. Or, you know, let's actually look up neuro. That might have some interesting stuff. No, no, just this. Uh, I remember micro. Micro is a pretty good keyword for this because there's all a, a bit of different stuff. You know, we got like microfluidic downsizing, large scale biology. We got the Wuto. We got 3D printed microelectronics, digitally synthesized beat frequency multiplexing for sub millisecond fluorescence microscopy. I have no idea what this means, but I I think it sounds awesome, and I am glad it's in cayenne pepper. You know, I kind of think researchers are in a eternal competition to have like the most confusing ass paper titles. Because look at this, shaped 3D microcarriers for adherent cell culture and analysis. I mean, that one made a bit more sense, but like, what even is all that? Okay, so let's take a look at, let's do something like E, you know, let's just do E. Let's see what that gets us. My God. So <laughs> I probably should put in some sort of like filtering so that way you have to look up a certain amount of characters because otherwise you get this monstrosity. I think this might actually be close to every paper in uh, in the database. There's a whole lot out here. Let's see if I can go. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, when it's rendered on the browser, all of these... Oh, look at that. The quantum internet. That looks cool. So when it's rendered in the browser, all of these papers are actually placed in rows and they're kind of offset, the rows are, by each other. And that was my simple naive algorithm for a good layout when I end up rendering all these inside the browser. Uh, that was just my take on how should I best do this in a simple way. I didn't want to spend too much time on this algorithm. Uh, you know, because this thing isn't even live yet. So let's go back to the paper that I'm a co-author in. And so that's essentially this app in action. I'm thinking I might end up releasing this project one day beyond just a 24 hour sort of trial period. Uh, I, have some I have some design ideas for it. Like maybe instead of having the app web crawl and store all these results in a database that I have to host. It'll web crawl from your browser when the client specifically accesses a research paper and it might just store it locally. Or maybe I'll do away with it as a website and I'll just make it an app and you can store that stuff locally on your phone. So when I decentralize it in that way, it becomes free for me to host because let me tell you something, hosting is a broke college programmer's arch enemy because I have so many projects that I would just love to make public to everyone but I don't want to pay for hosting so I kind of get creative I think I probably will go with the decentralized route if you guys think I really should make this available to everyone because you know I think it's a good idea and if it's worth it I'll totally develop it in the future. Thank you for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe. Or you can follow me at the social medias listed down below. And if you're interested in getting in technologies that I use to build this app, I actually have a few videos on my channel that describe what these technologies are and how to use them. Namely, I've got what is Python Flask, what is Node, and what is SQL. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.